Hey, I'm glad to have you here. I guess you are here checking out our cybersecurity program at Canon. Yes, this is uh, Dr. Richard Matovo, and I'm an assistant professor at Canon University. I've been here for over a year, and um, I teach uh, cybersecurity courses and computer science courses. I did my bachelor's in uh, Uganda, and that was bachelor's of statistics. And then I went on to do a master's in data communication and software engineering, where I specialize in software engineering. And then that's when I moved to the US and I did my PhD in computer science, specializing in cybersecurity and machine learning, which I did at Texas Tech. While I was doing my PhD, I specialized in developing new authentication systems that can be used on wearable devices and on emerging technologies like uh, VR and uh, eye trackers. My authentication systems are basically to augment and use the security on mobile and uh, IoT devices that are now commonly used uh, with us. In our day-to-day -day life, we keep on interacting with these devices and they collect a lot of information from us. But how do you know where this information goes? How do you know how this information is used by the vendor who is using the, who is uh, providing the service to you? The only way we are able to ensure this is by investigating, and this is what my research is about. It's about developing authentication systems that don't need you to enter your password, but they are going to learn your behaviors. And so I do that by developing learning algorithms that basically are going to characterize your behavior and based on these behaviors they are going to be able to distinguish you from another person. That means you no longer need to use a password. All you need to do is, for example, come to your door at your home and the system will be able to detect that it is you and not another person and therefore it will open the door for you. The other thing that I focused on during my PhD was to learn security vulnerabilities of these devices. What are those things that someone could learn about you which you don't want them to learn about? And I looked at devices like an EEG device which are now commonly used in medical fields, for example, to tell your brain signals and understand what is going on within your brain. So I pivoted that and then I tried to learn what can an attacker who has access to this information learn about you. For example, they could learn the chronic diseases that are recorded within these brain signals. And again, I use machine learning and AI tools to build and learn these characteristics and then I'm able to identify such information. The overall goal of my research is actually not to break into systems, but to learn how attackers could learn private information about you, and then how can we build defense mechanisms to defend against this. Actually, before I joined also Ganon, I worked uh, a lot in the industry. Most of my experience is in the telecom field. During that time, I used to build a lot of systems, which included uh, uh, integrations into mobile money systems back home in one of the biggest telecoms in Africa called MTN. During that time, I also built a lot of value-added services, which included uh, add-ons, for example, for voice minutes, for SMS minutes, and uh, other things in that area. As time went on, I, I realized that our company was not, over, uh, was not utilizing the capacity of the data that we were collecting, and that's how I ended up going into business intelligence. During that time, I worked with a lot of stakeholders, including marketing sales, to understand what are the characteristics of our customers. What are their profiles? What profiles are they interested in? What commodity, what services are they more interested in? In what areas are they focusing on? 
and I brought all this data, aggregating it in a very big data warehouse, which would run every day to give these insights to the marketing and other teams to help them drive campaigns. After that, I moved on to a utility company, which is the biggest again in Uganda, and I helped lead a development team. During that time, I looked at business processes that were not efficient and then helped this, I helped this uh, streamline these business processes by identifying where there are gaps or the red tape and trying to uh, streamline that so that the processes were more efficient. I led uh, development teams and business teams to develop applications which were enterprise-wide and would help eff efficiently uh, streamline these business processes. One of those was an, a procurement system that follows a procurement uh, uh, process, a, a standard procurement process. A question you would ask me is what brought me into IT and computers? Actually, since I was a little boy, I wanted to make an impact in the society. One of the ways I thought of making this impact would be to develop applications that would help people. Whenever I see the applications that have designed behind the scenes being used by a multitude of people, this makes my heart happy. Including, for example, the mobile, uh, inter mobile money applications that is being used back home in my country, Uganda. This application is being used by a, a ma the majority of the population to pay school fees, to pay bills, to pay many things. And why they are using this application, I know in detail how this application works and how it can, how it came to be. I feel joy to see such applications already in the field. During my industry experience, I also had an opportunity to interview a lot of students coming into the companies. I also had an opportunity to work with many student interns. Most of the time, these interns focused on the trivial issues of uh, computers, like how to fix a mouse and a keyboard, and I felt they are not realizing their potential in this one. And that is how I decided that I can make actually this impact much bigger by coming into academia. That's how I ended up becoming a professor here. To help these students learn what they can do with the technology that they have. Just one kid that I teach is going to be able to develop a lot of those applications that I was doing. And those applications are going to impact the world. And that is my overall goal of everything that I do. From there, I pivoted, I pivoted in into cybersecurity. Cybersecurity affects all our lives, as you can imagine. Not any day you will spend without hearing an attack happening somewhere. It could be on a telecom, it could be on your mobile phone, it could be in the hospitals, it could be even in educational institutions. All our lives are affected on an individual level and as well as on the global level and as well as on the organization level. The simple things that you do, for example, your password could let, let in an attacker into your corporate environment and the attacker could, for example, launch a ransomware attack on your infrastructure. This has led to loss of uh, a lot of money and uh, people are paying a lot of ransomwares to these attackers because of very simple mistakes. For example, a social engineering attack from a phishing email, you could just click on that and then it's going to lead into an attacker learning the password and after it's going to elevate the privileges to capture all your, the network of the, of the company and from there it's going then to ask for a ransomware. So me teaching cybersecurity courses and as well as doing research in cybersecurity to find out how to defend against this attack again is creating a big impact on for my students but also on the world. It's a way of giving back again to the community.